Okay, it is 10 o'clock. It is Tuesday, August 16th. We are having a special slash emergency meeting. I'm calling here at 10 o'clock. Yolanda, can I get a roll call to establish quorum, please? Dr. Robbie? Ms. Shaw? Here. Ms. Count? Ms. Luna Roach? Here. Ms. Grijalba? Here, thank you. And so, um, Dr. Trujillo, can you read the land acknowledgement for us, please? Yes. If I can get the land acknowledgement statement up, please, Mr. Jean. On behalf of the governing board of the Tucson Unified School District, I, Gabriel Trujillo, acknowledge that the schools, buildings, and facilities of the Tucson Unified School District reside on the ancestral homeland of the Ta'ana Otham Nation and the federally recognized tribal land of the Pascuayaki tribe. Thank you, Dr. Trujillo. And Jean Armstrong, can you read us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jean. Um, Dr. Trujillo, we have a call to the audience as well. Um, I was going to ask for agenda adjustments yes. that we can address. The yes. action item, because um, you know we have board members that have a very narrow window of availability, and I want to make sure that we take care of the action first, and then go to the call. Absolutely, um, yes. Uh, yeah, is I would there like any opposition to that board. Okay, great. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into um, the action item: COVID nineteen readiness and response update. Dr. Trujillo. Yes, President Grijalva, members of the, the governing board, I'd like to welcome our Director for Health Services, Mr. Joseph Ga. Uh, we are here this morning because the Center for Disease Control, uh, CDC, issued new guidance for COVID-19 mitigation for schools with regard to individuals who have been exposed, whether they're vaccinated or non-vaccinated, to persons testing positive for COVID-19, effectively eliminating the recommendation for the five-day quarantine. Uh, back in January, the governing board took very specific action to establish this district's guidelines and requirements for quarantine and isolation for said individuals. So here to present the uh, new CDC guidance and the recommendation of the administration, our new health services director, Mr. Joseph Ga. Mr. Ga. Good morning, Madam President. Superintendent, member of the board and guests. I am Joseph Gall. I am the Director of Health Services and I'm here to, to guide you th through the newest uh, uh, PDC guidelines. Uh, just so that you're aware that, that I do stutter, so I apologize ahead of time if it does uh, uh um, if it impedes us in any way. Sir, no need to apologize. We're happy you're here. Looking Thank forward you, to your Mr. information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, do I have the remote to change slides or next slide, please? Okay, so here is the, the major uh, new changes out there. So basically the, the, the practice of of having students and staff in a a smaller uh, in smaller groups and cohorts has been now effectively been uh, been removed. Uh, they have changed uh, the the screening process uh, for those those particular individuals who are deemed as like at at high risk and uh, and 
particularly around what a district would do if there is a potential outbreak. They have also uh, have now removed the the concept of of when to have a a in individual to engage in quarantine, um, except in high risk um, settings, which a school district does not meet that standard, by the way. Uh, we also have a have the test, a test in order to stay, policies have all been gone as well. Um, and and there's new inform new guidelines on how on on when to have a mask, uh, how to handle positive cases, and also what to do when there there's an actual outbreak. Uh, slide change, please. So the key components of this is, is that we're going to a, a leveling approach based on the TDC standards for what is a, a low, medium, and high potential risk for the trans, transmission of spread. Uh, this particular process incorporates multiple like data sets, which gives you the best possible opportunity to to uh, to plan. So the guidelines basically are recommending that that school districts create um, policy and procedures that align to low, medium, and high. Uh, CDC risk levels. Uh, those have been published uh, practically every day, uh, but the CDC only updates them once per week at this point. Uh, so, so our role is now moving from uh, from basically uh, leading that particular strategy to a prevention type strategy approach at this point. So what are we doing to ensure that, that we are, are reducing spread as much as possible? So the guidelines really are focused on, on the setting specifically and how the school district handles a, has a confirmed the like outbreak response. Now, um, in in prior guidelines, uh, they're very hesitant to to basically define what a mental health supports and social emotional supports into everyday practice seems to Ms. make Brown? it. Ms. Brown, Ms. Yeah. Brown, can you? Can you can, I'm sorry. Um, All right. Can we? Thank, thank you. you. Sure. So, um, so, so. The district is now required to define what it means when there's an outbreak, and I'll uh, and I'll speak on that in in a few minutes here. Um, but it's also uh, definitely focused on on the key component of what we all do. It's to maximize in-person learning. So th that is a, a big, huge approach that, that we're very happy to see. Um, but basically it's up now to the school district to define to each of these strategies. The Pima County Health Department um, has noted they are now, they are realigning themselves for this, uh, towards this, Towards this CDC as their prime primary primary source of guidance. Now, next slide. It's also important that that all of us note that these guidelines are really 
shifting us to a, a multi-disease process approach because we found that, that when we were uh, uh, implementing strategies to prevent spread with COVID, that we were also impacting other things to like flu and engaging in, in wellness type behaviors as well. So this guideline tries to, to build strategy that will also inf influence all these, these other uh, situations as well. So here are the basic strategies that, that the guideline says that should be in every plan. So the number one approach is getting people to stay up to date on their vaccinations. And they're very specific about all vaccinations. So it's not just for COVID. Um, if you're sick, stay home, plain and simple. Don't come to work, don't come to school. They also have, have defined uh, how to ventilate more and particularly on education and guidance on hand hygiene and wellness practices and sanitation. So uh, we're kind of going into the world of now we educate and inform and we guide. So cleaning, focus again on, on low, medium, and high uh, spread levels. There is some, some masking type guidance in there as well, testing practices, how to manage positive cases and uh, those who are potentially or confirmed exposed, uh, how to, to particularly respond when the district has determined that they have an outbreak, uh, particularly around high risk activities like uh, sports indoors, uh, band practice and choirs, stuff like that. Uh, we don't have to worry about our dorms and overnight care in, in this situation. But when we are building out a plan, it it's important that we can consider these strategies here um, as like age, uh, health risk, such of that nature to ensure uh, that we are are focusing on the on the on the setting specifically. New slide, please. So here is the modified algorithm uh, that is being uh, proposed here. So what we have done is basically removed the quarantine guidance because quarantining and, and contact tracing is, is really being focused on, uh, on health facilities and high risk areas like uh, jails and 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 us uh, and touch of that nature. So we basically have simplified this process a lot. So the quarantine has been removed. Uh, there is a clear positive and symptomatic response here. Uh, there's also a plan on how to have a person like return back to school and work. Uh, it's also very specific on um, on things like high risk individuals should definitely be in contact with a healthcare provider straight away. Um, if you are positive or or symptomatic, uh, or you have tested positive with no symptoms, you will have to isolate for five days. Plain and simple. There's no 
way around that. Uh, you may return on day six if your symptoms have improved, you have no fever for more than 24 hours without the use of any uh, fever reducing uh, re fever reducing pharmacology and you have to be able to wear a well hitting mask for five days. Now we are very aware that the state of Arizona um, has passed um, passed legislation that that would impede that process. So if a person is unable to wear a mask or unwilling to wear a mask, uh, the guidelines basically say they should be in, they should isolate for 10 days. Um, so that they would then return on, on the, on day number 11, assuming they have um, improved symptoms, no, no fever of as well. So if a person is positive or symptomatic and they have come to school, we're going to have to ask them if they are willing to wear a well-fitting mask uh, while they're in the building, and if they're unable to or unwilling to, we would have to um, to separate them from the popul the populace as 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 best as possible. We're going to send them home, and we're going to offer them testing uh, by written 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 consent. Um, or, or have a person be encouraged in testing. Now, because we're not doing uh, technically contact tracing and such, if a person is suspected to have been in close contact or, um, or technically exposed, we are going to... Uh, to encourage them to wear a mask for 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 a period of ten days and test on day five, um, but if they're symptomatic, they should definitely um, uh, have a test sooner. But if they're positive or symptomatic, they they then would follows to the positive guidelines. Uh, so right now the the current need is is basically to establish uh, a practice by which uh, we have uh, we have specific uh, specific specific, specific actions that are going to prevent the spread per a low, medium, and high. And we have, have uh, potentially determined what the definition of an outbreak is for TUSD is three or more cases or 10% of so the total the total popu population <clears throat> uh, who who uh, excuse me so it is three or more confirmed covid-19 cases among individuals in close contact with a positive case. Now that's also 10% of so the, the total population within a 14 day period who do not share the same household and were not identified as close contacts in a, another 
heading. So uh, we think that this plan is a, 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 a pretty strong bridge to get us from here to the, uh, to the, the, to the, the leveled approach uh, that is, is suggested per of these guidelines. So I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Trujillo to, to take over what the ask is of our board and also answer any questions if you have them. Thank you, Mr. Gaw. Dr. Trujillo. So thank you, Mr. Gaw, for the information. We are, of course, working with very limited time with our board members, so I want to be very specific about what this morning's ask is. We're asking for a motion to adopt the most recently issued CDC guidance that you've just seen, specifically authorization to eliminate the five-day isolation requirement for vaccinated and non-vaccinated and asymptomatic individuals who have been exposed to persons testing positive for COVID-19. We also are looking for a second motion to authorize the administration to update governing board policy GBGCC in accordance with any district-wide changes that are necessary for policy alignment to the most recent and currently issued recommendations for COVID-19 mitigation, isolation and quarantine that will continue to come from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. We think that the authorization of this second motion will prevent us from having to come back to the governing board every time new guidance is issued and we have to pivot and adjust. Um, so that way we're out of a situation where we'd have to wait a week or two weeks for the next governing board meeting. So there are two motions uh, that we're seeking governing board approval on this morning. Okay, and Dr. Trujillo, a question. So right now, essentially we're eliminating that requirement to quarantine for five days, being sent home for five days, um, because you were close contact. Now, if we adopt the policy as suggested, then um, we're saying that you stay home for five days if you're positive, and then you're recommending mask use. But we can we require that? Up and I mean, I think we can require it up until a certain point. But I guess the problem for me is the way it looks is we're going to encourage people to wear a mask, and if they don't, um, you know, in a high school setting, a big school. People forget that someone had COVID. And so, you know, we don't, we can't put our staff in the position of being mask police um, because that, you know, ensuring everyone's safety is super important, but logistically it's just not possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to Rob, but it, it's gonna be a hard no uh, in terms of okay. being able to require students to wear a mask, uh, particularly after September 23rd. Um, as you saw on the flow chart, you know, when a person is coming back on day six um, after testing positive and you have that criteria that, that, that Mr. God just presented, uh, we're using the language of strongly encouraged uh, to wear a mask for the following 10 days upon their arrival on campus. But no, we cannot force them. And I think at this juncture, it's very important to note that though we're adopting um, or asking the board to adopt the elimination of the five-day isolation period for individuals exposed to COVID-19 positive individuals, we are not taking our foot off of the gas on all of our other mitigation efforts. We are strongly encouraging masks for any time that we are in the yellow or definitely the red range for COVID-19 positivity in our district. We strongly encourage masks if you want to wear a mask. Uh, we want to make an environment that makes you comfortable wearing a mask if you're a student or staff member stay home when you're sick. Uh, and we are still offering the pool testing, which is still a very, very important mitigation tool in our tool chest that at this juncture is not costing the district uh, anything. Uh, it does allow us to identify specifically potentially symptomatic individuals uh, a lot sooner than we would otherwise. Okay, board members, any questions? All right. Anything else staff wants to add? So I'll go ahead and move um, the first item, the recommendation as presented by Mr. Gaw. That slide, we're essentially approving the slide, correct? So, Dr. Thurheel? Yeah, uh, Jean, if you can put the graphic back up, please. 
so the board members can see specifically. Yep, there you go. And then I can't read the wording at the bottom, but does it essentially say something like, you know, a TUSD administration has the right to change this policy <laughs> um, as, you know, like we're going to give you that authority at the next item, but I want to make sure that there's some sort of asterisk there so we don't have to have an emergency meeting to update this graphic. Yeah, it does not. So I would, I would want to have that added. Right. Okay. So we can add that at the bottom. Um, if you take note of that, Mr. Ga down where it says no definitions. And then also I think on the bullet, um, on the left side of our flow chart here, where it says wear a mask around others, uh, we probably should use language such as uh, strongly encouraged to wear a mask around others. Okay. Any other questions or comments, board members? Or can I get a second? I'll second. Okay, so I have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item passes unanimously. And now we're on to the second request, Dr. Trujillo, which was to change. Can you remind me the governing board policy? Yeah, so our second, our second motion is to authorize the administration uh, to update governing board policy GBGCC, which outlines our requirements for COVID-19 mitigation with regard to isolation, quarantine, and other efforts um, in accordance with any district-wide changes that may be necessary or any policy alignment that may be necessary to align with updated CDC recommendations as they may come. Um, that way we're not in the position, of course, having to come back to the governing board every time such alignment is needed. Okay, Mr. Ross, did you have a comment? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you, President Grijalva. I just wanted, I think Dr. Trujillo just covered it and I didn't get to lower my hand. I, I just wanna make sure that we're not just limiting the authority to make adjustments to GBGCC because this chart was never really part of GBGCC. And my understanding is the intent is to, for the administration to be able to also adjust these, these guidelines that the board is approving based on um, future CDC guidance. I just wanna make sure it's not just the policy. Right, no, I, I would go ahead and say, I would, I would say GBGCC and any other policies, graphics, anything else related to COVID-19 mitigation isolation, update them in accordance to um, the recommendations from the CDC. And then um, I would just request as part of that item that if there are any changes at the next, uh, at the upcoming board meeting, if we could have a study item where we can publicly talk about whatever changes have been made. Wouldn't require a vote, but just so, you know, we have a public forum in which to talk about them. All right, um, so I'll go ahead and make that as a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second by Ms. Luna Rose. Any additional discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item passes unanimously. Um, thank you. And thank you um, to Clerk Luna Rose and Board Member Shaw for um, jumping in. The goal, I think, for all of us was to make sure that we weren't sending students home based on a policy that we were gonna update at our next available meeting. And um, for some students, that would mean a whole week of lost education if we didn't get together. So thank you to um, the rest of the TUSD team, to Dr. Trujillo and everyone for, for making that possible and for us to be able to do this. We do have call to the audience. Um, and I did make a commitment to our board members that we were gonna get out of here by 1030. Um, Doc, uh, Miss, uh, I'm sorry, Yolanda, are any of the uh, people that wanted to speak a call to the audience here on the line? No, they're, were they, they all except in the written form. They're all written form. And so, Mr. Ross, can we ask that staff send those to us um, instead of taking the time right now to read each of those? Uh, Ms. Grijalva, your, your policy does allow for, at least your practice recently since COVID has allowed for written comments to be read. You can also have them provided to the board members. That would be a board decision to change the, um, change the agenda uh, to, to exclude call to the audience, but that's always part of your, uh, the board's prerogative. To make right, I don't, yeah, I don't wanna exclude it. I'm just very aware of the time. So board members, how did you want to 
move forward. I would prefer to have Yolanda send all of us, including the board members that aren't here, um, the comments from those that wanted their comments read and called to the audience, um, or we can, I can stay on as long as possible. And as soon as, soon as one of us is gone, the meeting is over. So um, if I don't see any objection, I'm just gonna request that Yolanda go ahead and send um, those comments to call to the audience to each of the board members. And then I would like, um, Mr. Ross, I know that it was agendized, but this was a very rushed meeting for us to look at the policy regarding special meeting and emergency meetings, because in those cases where we have like this narrow window of time, I don't want the community to feel like we're dismissing their input, but literally we got together for half an hour to deal with this, this, this specific issue. All right. Yes, ma'am, okay. we'll add that to the list. All right, thank you, Yolanda, if you could send those comments to us. Um, any future agenda items, anything we need to focus on? Dr. Tejero, anything we missed? We got it. And all I right. do, again, thank I wanna thank all of you for being here this morning. And when will you get this information out to our um, school? Today. Okay, As great. Said, there, there is an urgency around keeping kids and kids in school and employees on the job. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone, for um, for joining the meeting, this emergency meeting, and it's adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.